right. Um, in this course, we don't get really big in the derivation of the fundamental theorem of calculus, but the whole key to it, and it's a huge theorem, huge, I mean huge, is that this is a way we connect antiderivatives with derivatives. And that's that fundamental theorem of calculus. We actually use it for um, calculating area, but it is important that you realize, and you can look up the proof and go through it, talks more about it in your textbook, but all we're interested in is this last line, which says, if I can find the antiderivative, which is the capital F, okay, if I can find capital F of X, even shows it up here, then I could plug in my interval. So notice we always do the largest value first, B minus A. And what that gives me is area underneath this curve. And this is huge. It's, I mean, it's big. It's big. It's, I'm telling you, it's big. All right, so we're going to use this. So all you have to understand is how to find antiderivatives. And you've worked a lot of homework problems by now, and hopefully you know how to find antiderivatives. And now we're just going to add a step for finding the area. So that's what this is saying here is typically this is lower f of x, but we'll just put it as a prime. This is the derivative. Then I can find actual area. I find the antiderivative. I cal calculate my f, f of b minus f of a, and that gives me area. Um, a lot of times you will see this straight up and down symbol. In fact, I tend to do that a lot, just how I was taught um, to find area as well. This gives you exact area, where what we were doing in Chapter 5 is we were, you know, getting rectangles and getting pretty good, you know, estimates, but this is, this will actually give you exact area, because this is taking limits, once again, letting your number of rectangles go to infinity, letting the width of the rectangles go to zero. Uh, this only works when you can find a formula for the antiderivative, so that's why we still need Riemann sums where we can use tables and things like that uh, to be able to find that, that total distance or area. So let's do a few of these. Now, again, the key, the first key is that you can find the antiderivative. So again, hopefully you've practiced these. So here, as I can see, my derivative is equal to 1. So once again, what did I take the, hello, what did I take the derivative of, I don't know why my writing ain't working, to get, what function did I take the derivative of to get 1? Well, I think just x, right? Because the derivative of x is 1, so the antiderivative would be x. And I'm going to evaluate this from 1 to 3, or 3 to 1. So I this is the part that I'm plugging in f of b minus f of a, where this is b and this is a. So I plug in where I see x, I plug in a 3. Where I see x, I plug in a 1, I subtract, and I get 2. Now, as you're first learning these, what I would do is I would go, remember this web page that we found? I would go in here and I would enter, okay? So notice, going back, looking here, you're entering the antiderivative, or I'm sorry, you're entering the derivative. So you're actually going to put a 1 there and then from 1 to 3. So I'd put a 1, I'd go from 1 to 3, calculate the area, and as you can probably guess, we're just looking at x, right? So if I'm graphing, um, looking at the area underneath 1, because that's my derivative, and I'm going from 1 to 3, this actually you could have done with a rectangle and see that you get 2. So don't forget about this program. I know you can't use it on the test, but it's a good way to practice and check to see if what you're doing is correct. So let's keep moving on, moving on. So the next one here, I have 2x. So I, I kind of sort of remember how to find antiderivatives, if it'll let me write. It won't let me write. Hold on, let's see. Maybe if I get another color. 
Will you let me write? There we go. So the antiderivative of 2x would be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, right? And notice we're not putting the plus c because we're actually finding area. The plus c, we were just getting the antiderivative. And so this would be 2x squared over 2 or just simply x squared that I'm going to evaluate from 1 to 3. So on my f of b, I plug in 3, and then I plug in 1. So I get 9 minus 1, and thus I get 8. So we're going to see if that works. I have 2x from 1 to 3. So 2x, calculate my area. <clears throat> and as I can see, I do get that value of 8. So that's looking good. All right, let's look at this one. So I want to first find the antiderivative. So my antiderivative would be x squared plus 1 over 2 plus 1. If you don't have these antiderivatives down, you're in trouble, right? So practice them. And so this, of course, is 6x to the third over 3. And you don't have to simplify it because you're going to get the same answer. It's just easier if you simplify it for plugging things in. And I'm going to plug in 0, and I'm going to plug in 2. So again, my f of b minus my f of a, which is what I'm doing here. So 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 0 cubed. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. That's 0, and I get 16. Not too sure of myself, so let's check it. 6x squared from 0 to 2. 6x squared from, uh-oh, from 0 to 2. Calculate area. Boom! What do you know? I got 16. Pretty good at these, right? All right, so here's another one. I want to find... T cubed, the antiderivative, well, that's just going to be T to the fourth over 4. Evaluated it from 0 to 2. So I'm going to plug in 2. I'm going to plug in 0. Even though I know this is 0, just be careful. Okay, go ahead and plug in um, your values. And so up top, I get 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2, which is 16 over 4. So that just becomes 4. And of course, the last part becomes 0. So t cubed, 0 to 2. tx cubed, 0 to 2. And I get 4. Looking good. I have something a little bit more complicated. So just adding terms, basically, is what we're doing. And I want to find this antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 8x would be 8x squared over 2. The antiderivative of 5 would be 5x. And again, can make this look a little better. So 4x squared plus 5x. And this shows how you're plugging in. So I'm going to plug in 2. And I'm going to plug in 1, but you plug in 2 to both. So what I typically do is I'll put a square bracket. So I'm going to plug in 2 and 2, so into my entire function. And now I'm going to plug in 1 plus 5 times 1. So as you can see, you got to plug in the value to everywhere you see a variable, okay, for both f of b and f of a. So 2 times 2 is 4, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 10, 26, okay, so that was 16, plus that's 10, and then minus looks like 9, because that'll be 4, and that'll be 5, and it looks like I get 17, so 8x plus 5 from 1 to 2, 8x plus 5 from 1 to 2, and I get 17. So you can see this, this 
little calculator thing is really nice, right? Because it really allows you to check to see if you're doing these correctly. Now, if you go in the homework and you just use this calculator, then you're probably not going to do very well on the test because you're not practicing these. Okay, so you definitely want to practice. All right, so this one looks a little weird. I got an E in there. So my antiderivative, do you remember how to do this one? So I'm going to bring the 8 out front just to show you that I'm really just finding the antiderivative because the 8 is just a um, constant that gets thrown out front. <clears throat> so if you remember, the antiderivative of e to the 2t is 1 over 2 e to the 2t. You remember that? You better remember, you better remember that. And, of course, a half of 8 would be 4e to the 2t. And I'm going to evaluate this from 0 to 1. Now, as I recall in your homework, they want you to leave this as an exact answer, meaning you're going to plug in 1, and then you're going to plug in 0. Well, this is just 4e to the second power. This is going to be 4e to the 0 power, and anything to the 0 power is 1. So this would be my final answer. However, if you wanted to check it, so let's get our nice trusty calculator here, and I'm going to do 4e squared minus 4, and I get 25.56, so 8e to the 2t, 8 e to the 2, no, can't use t, and I'm going from 0 to 1, and I get the 25.556, which is what I get if I put this in my calculator. So that way it's still, even though Wiley may want you to leave it this way, okay, and in, in, in exact, and how you know it won't say to round to so many decimals, okay, it'll say give an exact answer, and so you just leave it like this. And that's it for the fundamental theorem of calculus is you're just doing an extra step after the antiderivative. You're plugging in your interval, okay, and you're getting area. Just don't forget that's what you're getting is area.